So ARM is located, you guys should know this, but under the finance module or GL, and the screens that um, go with ARM are report definitions, rows, columns, and units. So we create financial reports. We can create financial reports from the GL or project reports from the project module for project transactions using ARM. Today, we're gonna focus mostly on the financial reporting side of things because that's what, ev what everybody uses. Um, so again, once you add these to your menu, you may see them under your financial statements here but to actually access them and um, create them, I'm going to focus on these four screens here and we'll talk about how you add them over here. So um, I'm clicking just on report definitions so I can see a list of all my reports out here. And the way Acumatica is structured is out of the box, you have a bunch of reports that start with a D and they have, each one has a code, an ID and a description or name. And these are those building blocks. So with a report, you, a row set and a column set are required and a unit set is optional, but it actually takes that report and multiplies it by your either your sub account or companies or branches, things like that. Um, so again, a row set and column set are required and those are the screens you're seeing here. So the report definition is where we put it all together. The row set is where we define the row, we'll focus on that. The column set is where we define the, um, the column layout, how we want our columns to look. And then unit sets optional, we'll talk about that as well. So in our report definitions though, any of these that start with a D are that stands for demo and they come out of the box when you um, start Acumatica, a brand new implementation of Acumatica. You have all these as demos. One, I'm gonna give hints and tips along the way. One thing I've seen at many of our customers is they, um, they use the demo reports and that's fine. What I like to do is pull up a, a demo report and even if you're gonna use the row and the column, I like to just do a copy of it. So, I'm sorry, over here. So I copy it and um, give it a new name, okay? Uh, did I see anything here? So if I'm going to copy it, I would just call this, you know, my, like my PNL or whatever I call my infant statement summary, however I wanna call it. I'm not gonna copy this now. But um, that way you know the demo reports are the original demos, and then you'll see a list of all your reports that you're using. So that's just one hint. You might want to rename some of those, even the, the um, building blocks. I like to, instead of using DPL, I like to maybe start with that as a template, but from the row set itself, I like to copy it and call it a new one and leave the demo as it is. But that's fine. I know some of you just use these demos. So that's one hint. Um, also try to really name it. So when we are in a report, in the report definitions, over on the sitemap, this is the description that you're going to see in the list of these report definitions. Um, over here, this is what you're going to see as the title on your menu. So this is kind of the one that's really important. Let me pull up a different one by branch. Oh, that's that one. So this is the one I would really want to call profit and loss by branch. Okay, because it's um, that's what's going to appear on my actual menu here. And this checkbox, and now this comes in later versions, so not all of the, you have this option here, but whether or not you want to show it on your menu. So you can now put this, the financial reports do not have to be, the, the workspace is the module. They don't have to necessarily be in the finance module. They could be in any category or module you want to put them, but it does make sense to put them under finance and financial statements. We'll go over some of these other settings first, but let's just talk about creating a report and some of the hints and tips I'll give you there. So the very, very first thing you have to do is you do have to create a row set. So I'm going to go, if I was creating this from scratch, um, now this is a demo one. Again, I could copy this to a new one and call it whatever I want. Um, when we're looking at a row set, I know a lot of you run your ARM reports, but you've never really modified them or created any from scratch. So let's just talk about this in really simple terms. This code here, the first, so again, with row codes, you have an, an ID and a description. Um, I like to name these, you know, so that they're pretty, I mean, that was a fine one right there, but I like to make it a little bit more, if it's more detailed or more summary, I'd like to give it a better description so you know what that row set is. Now that's not the whole report. So another hint is some people will name this and call it like um, PNL this year versus last year. But really this is just the PNL row set. We haven't done anything with the columns yet. So you really want to name this specific to the row. And when you're naming your column sets, you want to name them very specific to what that column is. It doesn't have to be 
a PL because you might share it between your PL and your balance sheet, the column set. So just some hints there. This code going down the page, you have to number those yourself. So when you start with a brand new row set, it's blank. I'm gonna just do one real quick. Oh, I already won't have one. Let's do another new one and call it test DB. I know that's not there. Um, so I do have to give it a name. One hint um, is if you forget to give it a, a code when you start creating, if I jump to a new row set and I start adding lines and I keep going and I'm adding my next line and then I forget and at the very end, so I've entered, I've done this before myself, I've entered like 50 lines and I forget to put a code in a description. There's no way to copy this or to copy the lines into a new row set so you'll lose everything so just be sure the very first thing you do if I go to put something in now it's going to say everything's going to be discarded anything unsaved and I can't save it without putting in an ID so I lose it so I'm really stuck so just that's just one little helpful hint I'm going to start over and now I can start adding my lines and they'll save um, when I start a new row set, I really like to number these. I, I use a length of five and I increment them by 30. And the reason for that is say this is line one, this is line two, ah, line two. Um, if I have another, if I want to insert a line, I'll just do one more just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Oops, line three. Get my fingers on the right keys there. So I save this. So I'm, I'm starting to create my row set. Obviously, this would say revenue and everything. But to add a new line into a report, I cannot insert. There's no insert button right here. So if I want to add between line one and line two, I have to do this at a row. And I have to say 00115. And then I can say line one and a half as an example. As soon as I hit save, it reshuffles that and sorts it and puts it in there but there's no way to insert. So that's why when you start creating these, give yourself enough room in between. So if you add, have to add any lines, you can do that. You can always go back at the end and renumber lines by using this renumber code. You put in your numbering step and the length of how it's going to be. Okay, so then, and then you hit renumber. And the nice thing about that is it will renumber all your formulas and everything too. So if we look back at that, um, the PNL row set, Think of a row set as these are the lines that are going down the page. We're going to have the report print these descriptions and it's going to have, you know, grab the amounts from the accounts that we put in our data source. Um, another hint here too is um, if you can build your report with um, account classes rather than, you know, having to group accounts. So a hint here, so the data, the the description is what shows on my report, and this is just a caption like a title. This one is um, the data source field is what pulls what GL accounts, because this is a GL type we're pulling on here. Now, I could easily just put in here, I want to pull account 4,000 and a comma is how I do, uh, five digits is how they do it. 4,000, maybe I'm pulling 40100 and 40020. So to pull different accounts, I can do commas between those accounts if they're random. I can obviously also do a range. I can do 4000, ending account 4999. Um, I can, if I'm dealing with um, sub accounts that have segments, if I have multiple segments, I can leave spaces for the, like, the first segment and then do this so that I get a wild card there to grab just certain sub accounts. Um, but it's easier if you can do it to base your account classes on these account groupings. So when I do an implementation with customers from the beginning, um, one of the first things I say is when we're trying to define their accounts and their sub accounts is I'll have them send me a copy of their financial reports and I'll look at the breakdowns so that we set up these account classes here. Let's go to our revenue and for the balance sheet too, of course. But when we're doing the revenue, like here, we said sales. So instead of me having to put in, okay, on that line, it's 40,000 and 40010 and 40200. I'm just saying, pull everything. Where's my window? It's probably here. Pull everything for account class sales. 
Now that doesn't always work so easily. I mean, sometimes you have one report that might pull one grouping and another report that might pull something else. So, um, you know, use it the best way you can, but that's really why you want to set up those account classes. It'll help you. And sometimes if I get to where I'm setting up an ARM report after the fact for a customer and I didn't get to define those, those account classes, you can still set up account classes later and go assign them back to the um, accounts after the fact. So even if they didn't set up their account classes nicely, we can do that and go back and add it. So either way, there are some times when you just have to map to the account itself, but you can see this makes it a lot easier. The other thing is, if you think about this, on my chart of accounts, if I go and add a new account now, and I'm gonna add 41999, and I put it in the sales account class, and I call it sales other or something, now I've just added this and I don't have to go add it to every report. If I had mapped those to individual accounts, then I would have to then go add 4199 to all my P&L accounts. So that's just a little hint and tip. Account classes work out really nicely.